Cactus Jack and Chainsaw Charlie land bouncing each other with steel chairs. Mm-hmm. You cannot be disqualified in a rumble match. Mm-hmm. Shouldn't uh, they? I mean, there's a, there's a lot of ECW guys that are around the hardcore championship side that would they bring chairs and stuff into the ring, right? So, I well, mean, that, that's their gimmick. It's ECW, so clearly all ECW ever did was beat each other with chairs. True, mm-hmm. true. That's um, not true. There was Lucha, too. <laughs> <laughs> and they also beat each other with chairs. <laughs> okay. They're more Fine. inventive with the chairness, right? So, um, but uh, no, it, 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 there was a lot of good points in this, and I remember the John Cena uh, coming out. Uh, so a few points, a few points from this that I, I probably never noticed back then. There was there was a few kind of like holy, you know, like little detail moments of things, you know, that kind of go sideways. Did Hardcore Holly just straight stomp uh, Shawn Michaels in the face <laughs> when mm-hmm. he came in? Because. <laughs> he did yeah it's yeah. Like, then yeah. sean gets the bloody nose third guy mm-hmm. in and he's like i'm just gonna kick sean michaels in the head a few times and uh how do you like me now yeah yeah that seems in there was a scary moment where um cm punk came in house of fire got uh uh, uh got got the chokehold uh extended chokehold from taker kind of fought it off went to bulldog i think uh sean michaels and just got jacked in the face <laughs> i take her um and, and and riz points out another instance where apparently something similar happened to cody rhodes during this match i can see that like it I wasn't don't... it wasn't the cleanest match i noticed um let's roll rumble when are they ever right i i'm not mean clean like um like it makes complete sense i mean clean like the people were getting hit like potato patch fries a lot Mm -hmm. and it was it was not the cleanest thing in the world again this is this is the era where greg cully was walking around and being in royal rumble so i don't expect five stars this is this is there was a lot of beef in the ring there was there was some steak frites going on in this rumble i uh i took notes during this entire rumble oh good and they they they're not they're funny Okay, really go for funny. it. Go for it. What, what, what stuck out for you? Okay, so uh, there's Jomo entering like an awkward video game character. Uh, when John Morrison makes his entrance, the camera is like sort of cent- center of the ring. So in uh, the right corner is the action, and in the left corner you just see the doors go. And there's Jomo, and he does his entrance in the left corner of the screen. And I, I immediately thought, ah, WWE 19. <laughs> I, I immediately thought video game. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, no one distracts like Swoggle. When Swoggle came out, literally all of the action in the ring stopped for a second so that everybody could look and sell the fact that, oh my God, Horn Swoggle's actually in this match. What the hell? By the way, Horn Swoggle Sean- McMahon at the, at the time. Mm-hmm. Oh, gee- oh. oh well, it's officially a McMahon at this moment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, earlier in the pay per view, there's a promo where um, Vince is backstage convincing Hornswoggle that he can win and that he has to win because he's a McMahon. Mm. Oh, that's and awful. And he's even pointing out how Vince won a Royal Rumble back in the day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ms. Morrison and Cody step into a ring together, less tan, less muscles, and way less money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. I'm going to mute my mic because I'm just going to laugh the entire time. <laughs> Okay, the next couple of ones are just like straight up just mind dumping. Uh oh look, it's Jimmy Snooker. Uncomfortable. Roddy, Pi- Roddy Piper, less racism this time, thank God. Mm-hmm. Ah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Carlito is vastly underrated. I stick by that. He could have been a very great character and work wrestler in the wwe but they had him so regulated to being a funny character that uh it just it never worked the apple despite... game killed him oh yeah despite the it, fact it... that that was his trademark that was like his thing mm-hmm. uh i don't know why i wrote this one mick foley is here and i heard jack pollock sign exasperation somewhere <laughs> 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 i think I think I just I think I just uh, saw somebody uh, share the video of him getting socked. It was 
before I went and watched the video. I think that's why I wrote that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Just remember, there was a popular wrestler named Mr. Kennedy who later became popular as Mr. Anderson. I think I just don't like those names. And you you also have to repeat the last names, too. Kennedy. (laughs) No, 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 no. Uh, Cody Rhodes did this really cool rope thing where uh, there's this guy in KFWA who every time he gets tossed over the ropes, he catches himself and he lifts himself back up. Cody went to do that twice and then Kennedy tried to grab him and Cody Cody ended up hooking his legs around Kennedy's head and tossing him over. I thought that was awesome. You're talking about the skin the cat move? Yes. Yeah, okay. And the last one that I'm going to read off of this very, very long list, why did I make it so long, is good thing that Miz tucked his chin on that ha- on that hard elimination because it definitely would have buckled his face and neck. Horn- like Miz is like dangling upside down on the ropes, Hornswoggle, and it's like bouncing by his one hand. Hornswoggle comes and sweeps the hand. Mm. And Miz basically tucked himself so hard that he like bounced back first off the ring apron before hitting the floor which is good because if he had just gone straight down he would have gone head first um some notes from riz and he had a lot of them um this is like some of my my thoughts as well um this is the only time post wcw days that michael buffer appeared on wwe television and honestly in 2008 that man could read the yellow pages and make it sound somewhat entertaining i was and also you could tell that he didn't really like he michael buffer was throwing the inflection kind of in in places i wasn't used to (laughs) so like that was kind of throwing me off a little bit um i'm sure i didn't notice it live but uh let's see uh undertaker starting this was a huge surprise especially Having number thirty the last the year before, um, there was a thing about Great Collie in here somewhere. Oh, here it is because it's Riz. Also, have I mentioned how Great Collie and Taker actually make uh, uh, this type of battle uh, pretty epic? It didn't last long, but notice uh, HBK wasn't anywhere near the altercation until uh, Kali got in, in, in eliminated. Kali and Taker uh, worked tremendously together, and Kali did not deserve that you can't wrestle chant, especially if you looked up uh, his pre WWE days. Um, but also remember, this is New York. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, I had and, a, I, and, and Riz is telling us we were probably chanting the exact same thing. True. Um, yeah. um, also, like Mike had to explain to me why they were booing Rey Mysterio in New York City. So, mm-hmm. um, I get it now. Uh, let's see. Yeah. There, there's a, you mentioned the Cody Rhodes thing. There's a there's a Facebook that usually pops up on his feed on Facebook that accurately describes the moment when Cody Rhodes come, came out. As soon as he attacks Taker. You can see that he is he was legit scared. As soon as he hit that drop hit kick, you can see that he was completely shocked about the Undertaker, who started at number one, who had just recently as CM Punk had C- CM Punk do the same thing to him, only to take take Punk's head clean off his shoulders, the thing I was mentioning before. I tell him to kick and drop kick him. Uh he also lasted extremely long. He didn't do much he didn't do much because Cody got eliminated. Remember Cody Rhodes was, I remember Cody Rhodes was in the match. Um, he was teaming with Hardcore Holly as a tag champ at the time. I think mm-hmm. they mentioned. That's yeah. Um, that's that a not. weird yeah. pairing. It, it was because um, Hardcore Holly was look um, was looking for someone to be his tag team partner, and Cody had just started. And in fact, they when they lost the tag titles, it was because Ted DiBiase Jr. had a mystery partner. That ended up being Cody Rhodes. I remember that story, and that was that was the beginning of the dynasty, right? Uh, legacy, legacy. Yeah, yeah. Um, dynasty is uh, a soap opera from the eighties. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I could probably pinpoint the moment in Ted DiBiase Jr.'s career where there was no coming back ever, and it was definitely the segment where he had a rap battle against Art with with Maurice versus Art Truth and Eve Torres. And he sang God awfully, and Maurice just, bless her heart, just tried to dance along, and it didn't. Uh, yeah. That should have been the end of her career, too, but luckily, luckily she was able to come back from that. But Ted DiBiase, yeah, it was not a good time. Well, not a good time. I, 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 watching this match, the one thing, and sorry to take it down a little bit, was how many wrestlers are no longer with us. Really yeah. bummed me out. I, I, yeah. used that, I used to play that game a lot before I got really depressed. Okay. Like every, every entrant that would come out, I would either say, 
WWE, TNA, or Dead. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, mm-hmm. that's not. It's mm-hmm. usually the two, the three uh, categories they'd fall. And in. just it, well, the reason I bring this up is is just you know I'm playing I'm playing it again in the background, just like enjoying Umaga in general, mm-hmm. and just Umaga is just so oh, Umaga good. Was, oh, and you know what? Speaking of great finishes, his I Quit match with Cena. Yes. My God. Yes. Ooh. My God! Which one was, was which was, was was that finish? To remove the whole middle turnbuckle, and that's how he put him in the STF. He put him in the STFU mm-hmm. and choked yeah. him out with the middle rope, and, and oh. he didn't tap. He passed out. Yeah, and he just My looked God. like a massive monster. Um, Big Daddy V's in here. Roddy Piper, obviously. Um, you know, just and then and then it just that just so that sucks. But we're we're completely skipping over. The ending too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I want to I want to touch some other points before we get to that. Uh, but so f- real quick before because I lose Riz's thing because he's got a lot in here. Um, like a taker randomly taking out his frustration on HBK elimination on Snitsky was pretty yeah. random and pretty representative of how fans in 2008 thought about Snitsky. There you go. Mm-hmm. Uh, also yeah. Chavo was oh, ECW I- champion. I was just about to say that. Like Chavo was the first world champion. To be in a Royal Rumble, oh, because mm. that that hadn't happened before. Mm-hmm. There was a Rumble match for the world title. Well, was was was, but... was the ECW World Championship at this time a World Champion? They alluded <laughs> to the idea that Tommy Dreamer would pick the ECW Championship if he won. So if Chavo, but but then you're kind of like half-assing yourself because if Chavo wins, he's like, well, I'm gonna choose Big Goldie because I'm not a yeah. win. Uh, and then you say you're gonna be a two. Chavo said that one that when he won the Rumble, he would just take the night off. Oh yeah. Oh, did he? Oh, I, that's right. I believe that because he won it literally the ECW before this event. Mm. Okay. He won, it, he won it on the go home, and I'm pretty sure he said that, hey, if I win the Rumble, I'm just taking the night off. There was, a, there was a point in here where they talked about people qualifying on Saturday night. What the hell happened on Saturday night? Um, was there a main event or something? Let's see. Was it a velo- was Velocity still around at the time? Uh, that's but, but the, that Mick Foley and Hornswoggle would win their chance on Velocity. I think, I think they I think they um competed in matches on house shows. Royal Rumble qualifiers. On really, house shows. that's interesting. Yeah, because I'm looking on the the Wikipedia. Uh, John Morrison and the Miz. Defeated Jimmy Wang Yang and Shannon Moore to qualify for the Rumble on a house show. Huh. Hardcore Holly qualified by being Trevor Murdoch on a house show. Cody Rhodes beat William Regal on a Raw house show to qualify. Huh. Oh. Uh, Carlito and Santino defeated D.H. Smith and Super Crazy to qualify in a house Whoa. show. Whoa. So uh, D.H. Uh, Smith completely underutilized in WWE. Mm. Thank God, New Japan knew what to do with him. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they're like, hey, you're just going to be your dad. Cool? Cool. 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 <laughs> and uh, CM Punk qualified at WWE Super Show. Jeez. On the 26th. So, by being Chavo. But Chavo ended up in the match anyway. Yeah. This is 2008 CM Punk where he was like on the cusp of like still being a jack. <laughs> ass, but not and, cool enough for it yet. And I recall, like, I, I feel like watching back, if, if you weren't in the time, like, it just said, oh, yeah, there's another John Cena comeback. But at the time, like, I remember on the, what, what did we take, the bus ride up there or whatever we did to go up there? Oh, I think it was a car, actually. I mean, there were, like, there were reports about Cena saying that he may miss WrestleMania. Yep. In interviews and, and things. So he was, like, selling that idea. So it was a true it surprise a, for him to come out at this point. It's probably the last true surprise, I think, in wrestling history. It feels uh, like it. Well, it feels like it to me. I, Edge Big wrestling back. history. Edge coming back was a crazy one. You know what? You're oh, right. Yeah, Ed, it's, it's, the big, it's the biggest surprise since Edge. And then Edge kind of eclipsed it. But I remember reading an article on one of the forums where uh, like it was, it was old school dirt sheet. And he was like, it's a torn pack. Like, I'm out at least a year. I'm yeah. missing WrestleMania. Like, this is awful. Oh, this sucks because I want to be out there. He gave this interview like a week before. So that motherfucker knew he was coming back. 
back and cut that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I, when he came out at 30, like my dorm room exploded (laughs) because none of us expected this. And we're, we're, don't I, listen wwe if you want the 50 bucks i'll give you the 50 bucks we watched it illegally i'm sorry it was college i was a freshman deal with it um <laughs> and we're watching it in like uh, 180p so it's it's a pixel of john cena and even the pixel of john cena popped me it looked like, like the, it, look, it looked like the n64 entrances uh on it wrestlemania was no mer- i was watching no mercy's royal rumble match <laughs> Dick and it was Dick awesome Dick Dick the dog. <laughs> it was awesome Apparently, Hardcore Holly qualified for this Rumble match in Poughkeepsie. Yay! But uh, back in the hometown, I love, I love that this match started with Taker and Shawn Michaels, mm-hmm. who mm-hmm. were the last two in the Rumble before this. Mm-hmm. Like that was great. That, personally, that was solid. Personally, when those two got eliminated, it got a little hard for me to pay attention to the rest of the match. Mm-hmm. Even despite the fact that I think Triple H had entered the match by that point. Yeah. And um, just had he known, he, he was like, oh, wait, no, he might not have because yeah. he was 29. Yeah, he I think that might that might have been what drew me what drew me back in because that once I got eliminated, I was like, oh, that was that was fun. Looked at my phone and was like, wait, there's still a match going on. Yeah, that was that was a weird way to get to the middle. The, the, the mid card clear out was you clear out Shawn Michaels uh, and take her at the same time. And then you go to the mid card take clear out like mm-hmm. you think it'd be the other way around but i mean this was a very uniquely uh crafted match i mean the final the final three were it was batista hunter and cena mm-hmm. um and just that story is just fun mm-hmm. but you know just again seeing the scene coming out it's the only time cena's ever been cheered in new york um and i think that's that's a positive until he was um, until he wasn't three minutes later he was cheered at mania 20 uh, maybe, big, maybe big show okay that's uh, that's fair but still i mean like he was he was like they were hyped mm-hmm. like oh, that was God. that was something oh yeah that was a huge pop and the only reason it's not like like is again because of edge like edge coming back mm-hmm. kind of you know deflates it a little bit but you still sit there and just watching him just stare down uh, Triple H and Triple H just doing his spit yelling thing, like you <laughs> you get that sport that feeling that you've been sports entertained, mm-hmm. and uh, you're happy about it. And it doesn't happen much nowadays. John Cena should be respected as one of the greatest of all time. Absolutely, if not the greatest of all time, definitely the greatest of the modern era, and should be in the conversation. Absolutely. 100 percent i don't know if mike left or went to get his john cena funko pop i think he went to go get something uh i will say i will say one thing uh the whole i know we were kind of joking about this before but the whole hornswoggle not actually being eliminated became a really big concern for me during the match Uh, i was talking to you guys a little bit about this so patreon might have seen it uh but i remember watching the match and then i realized wait Hornswoggle was in this match and I don't remember seeing him get eliminated and I had this horrible moment of oh no they wouldn't do that they wouldn't they wouldn't just toss him in the middle of this amazing Triple H John Cena returning confrontation would they this is Vince McMahon we're talking about so would they and then it didn't happen and I was so relieved I mean I, as much as the concept of Hornswoggle being thrown like Spike Dudley uh, <laughs> kind of cracks me up, uh, I, I I have met I've ha- I have met Hornswoggle. He's a very nice person. <laughs> I do not want that for that man. New Yorkers would not have caught that. <laughs> they would. They would just clear. <laughs> they would have just been like, "Hey, look, there's a child coming through." No. So, so I no. also, it would have been yeah. like Daria playing volleyball. Yeah, we we uh, both we both. No, 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 no. Wow. Another, another show you should buy the complete series on DVD about. Any, uh, uh, I own yeah, it. but don't I own it. Don't tempt me. I've already spent too much money on this show. 